Now you've already read the chapter 8 opener about the cable company call times. Uh, by the time we are done with this chapter, you will learn how to make some inferences about how this company is doing. Chapter 8 is a start of topic 4, which is about inference. We'll be doing inference procedures from chapter 8 all the way to, to the end of the book in chapter 12. This chapter in particular is going to focus on uh, teaching you how to find and interpret confidence intervals. This is one of the foundation chapters for inference procedures. So it's important you grasp all components of this chapter. We will be spending a total of six days in lecture for this chapter. The first two will focus about the basics of confidence intervals. The second one is going to focus about what if it's population proportions, and then we're going to wrap up with what if it's the population mean. You'll be encountering this standard format for our learning for all six days. We will wrap up the chapter on our sixth day with actually doing an applet to help you better understand robust procedures. Then the entire unit again will wrap up with uh, one day on our free responses, two days dealing with our review, followed by our two days of testing with multiple choice and free response. Now topic four about inference for chapters eight through 12, you're going to be doing very much the same thing in terms of confidence intervals and tests. There's gonna be lots of different ones to choose from. Because of that, I've created an inference procedures summary sheet for you. So if you haven't gotten this from me yet, please come by my room to do so. For this particular chapter, we are going to be talking about three of them that show up on the sheet. So if you want to make note, we will be addressing the one sample proportion in constructing a confidence interval. We'll also be looking at the one sample of the mean in constructing the confidence interval when we are given the actual population standard deviation. And the third one is we'll be looking at the one sample mean in constructing the confidence interval when the standard deviation of the population is not known. So these are the three particular elements on this handout that will be related to chapter eight. Do know that this handout cannot be used on the exams, nor can it be used on the actual AP final exam, but it is a really good reference to help you learn um, the various conditions that need to be checked, the calculator um, options that you can use, and the various formulas and names of the procedures. I hope you find the handout helpful. Keep it handy for chapters 8 through 12.